Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Vanessa and welcome. Today we're going to be talking all about stretches before and after you work out. Let's wind down or get our body going with some yoga. Again, welcome to my channel. I put out videos every other week. Focus on lifestyle, yoga, meditation, self-help, whatever you need, you can find it here. So don't forget to hit that bell to subscribe and get notification when I put out new videos. Right. Let's get started, guys. So you had an amazing workout. You did your arms, you did your stretch, you did everything. Now it's time for you to cool down, relax. Let's get into it. The first pose we're gonna do is called cat cow. Let's get into cat cow. We're gonna do this pose four to six times. Inhale, arch your back, lift your chest, look towards the ceiling or sky. Cow pose. Exhale, round your spine, lower your head, push the floor away, look towards your navel, cat. And let's repeat. Inhale, arch your back, lift your chest, look towards the sky, cow. Exhale, round your spine, lower your head, push the floor away, look towards your navel for cat. Cat cow stretches your back, neck, and torso. Let's move into thread the needle. From a tabletop, hands under your shoulder, knees under your hips. Inhale, lift your right hand arm up towards the ceiling opening your chest slide in your right arm under your left arm with your palms facing up resting your right shoulder on the mat resting your right side of your face on the mat gazing up or over your shoulder remember to always adjust to fit your needs do not strain your neck and do not strain your shoulders we can hold this pose for 10 to 15 seconds or 15 to 30 seconds. Let's repeat. Thread the needle opens up the chest. It's good for stretching the shoulder, your arms, your neck. It stretches the spine. It's the overall good stretch for the upper body. Great job, guys. I like to do a little stretch of the wrist, flicking of the wrist, rotating the wrist in and out getting all the tension out of the wrist before I get started. Back to tabletop we go. From the tabletop, we're going to move into child's pose. Now child pose is considered a resting pose. I love this pose because it's actually a good resting pose. Let's hold this pose for at least 30 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds. All right, so knees are on the mat, big toes together, separate your knees hip wide. Exhale and lay your torso between your thighs. Your hands can be in front of you or stretched out with palms facing down, or your hands can be along your torso, palms facing up. Release your shoulders towards the floor. Child's pose is said to ease lower back pain and it helps stretches your hips and thighs. Downward facing dog. Let's lift our knees off the mat. Bring your pelvis up and back. Gently begin to straighten your legs. Do not lock your knees. Have a little slight bend in your knees. Press in the floor away and lengthen your spine. Did you know downward facing dog helps to stimulate blood flow? It also stretches the upper body and your abs and legs. From down dog, we're going to move to upward facing dog. Let's get ready by placing our knees on the floor, lifting or pulling your chest forward. Your thighs and knees can be lifted or you can modify by leaving your thighs and knees on the floor. Bring your chest out, gaze up to the ceiling. Upward facing dog is a back bend pose and it's also good for stretching your chest and your abdomen. Let's hold this pose for at least 30 seconds. You could always, always modify with your thighs and your knees on the floor. Okay. 
Now we're going to move into one of my favorite position, which is pigeon. Pigeon pose helps stretches your hips, your lower back, and it helps increase flexibility. So just a for reference, our leg should be in a number seven shape. I know I already got into the pose, but let's break it down. All right, we're gonna bring our right knee towards our right wrist. Place your shin on the mat. Straighten your back leg. Flex your toes to help straighten the back leg. This helps to point or flex your big toe. Walk your hands forward and lower forward to the mat. Square your hips towards the mat. To release, walk your hands back, straighten your arms, pushing yourself up, and stepping your right leg back. Let's go ahead and pedal our knees out and then we're going to hop into a forward fold. Booyah! Exhale and bend forward from the hip. Do not lock your knees. Have a slight bend in your knees. Bring your hands or your fingertips down to the floor in front of you. Or you can hold on to the back of your ankles. You can come halfway up to half flat back with your hands on your shin. Look at that booty, ow. <laughs> Check out yourself. You look good, girl, you look good. All right, exhale, forward fold. We're gonna close the sequence out with ragdoll. Let's bend slightly at the knees. Let's hold opposite elbow and allow your head to sway and come up one vertebrae at a time until we're straight. Slowly, slowly, slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Your back, your neck, your head up by your side. Now inhale, stretch your arms up, put a slight bend in your back, forward fold. I like to repeat the forward fold to a half flat back just to release everything. You can mix and match each pose. You don't necessarily have to do it how I did each pose step by step. So this is how I would do it, leaving the gym after a workout. So we start with a cat cow. We do this for about four to six times. And then I'm going to move to a downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, I kick my leg up. As I'm extra and I go into a pigeon pose. Lean forward, bring head to the mat. I'm in Florida and it is hot as hell and I was just ready to go in but I know I had to do this so back to downward facing dog and pigeon on the left side. And the best way to describe pigeon is actually your legs in a number seven position. And fold over. Keep that back leg flexed by pointing that big toe. Hold this pose for at least 15 to 30 seconds. Back to downward facing dog. I did a quick tabletop just to catch myself. 
and then I take it back to Charles Pose, which is a rest in purpose. Always adjust. Do not put the too much tension on your neck or your head. Feel free to adjust when needed. You don't have to do it perfect or imitate how I'm doing it. Go with your flow, go with your body. Next, I'm going to go back to a tabletop and we're going to move into threading the needle. Repeat on the other side. From thread the needle, a light tabletop, and then we're going into stretching the toes. Tuck your toes and sit back on your heel. I did a couple chest openers, placing my fingers intertwined behind my head. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, open up, exhale down, release in. Releasing your toes and sitting back on your heels. Back and let's tap our toes out. Tap, 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 tap it out. And then from that, we're going to move. Of course, you guessed it. Can you guess it? Let's see. Downward facing dog. From downward, we're going to hop into a forward fold to a half flat back. Release. Ragdoll. Close it all now with a ragdoll. Hold opposite elbow, sway slowly, and then we're going to come up one vertebrae at a time. This is the best part I love. Like you slowly, slowly, slowly elongating the spine and coming all the way up, and your head is the last to come up. And then we're going to finish with Tadasana Mountain Pose. Head up, giving thanks. Open it up. And that is it, Tadasana Mountain Pose. At the end, I like to breathe and give thanks and acknowledge myself, acknowledge what I did, and just get ready for the rest of my day. Thank you guys. I really hope you guys enjoy. Please follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, go ahead and comment below and let us have a chit chat. I'll see you next time. Thank you guys. Bye.